So you want to vlog your boring life, your boring ass life. You want to share it with the world and you're worried. You're wondering what's the best camera to share my shitty life with the planet, the entire planet. I'm about to show you. It's so scary in the woods. It's dark. There's insects looking at me. Why are they doing that? As long as I don't tilt my head up, there's no reflection. So let me say this, I am not a Panasonic fanboy. I am looking for a way out. I can't wait to leave this system. I don't want a tiny micro four thirds sensor. I don't want to be a part of this group. I want out. I'm just waiting for a full frame camera to sweep me off my feet, marry me, and treat me, touch my body like I deserve. Panasonic is far from perfect, but as of right now, still, two years later from its release date, in my opinion, the Panasonic G85, which you're watching right now, we're looking at it. It's the best video camera to film yourself, whether it's sitting down like this or handheld in a park. Sometimes I do handheld stuff walking out in the street like this in Thailand. So I had some set of needs and I researched like crazy Sony a7S II. I was like, should I go that high? Do I need that much of a camera? No flip out screen, so I didn't get that. Canon 80D, I was like, okay, autofocus, super good. Casey Neistat uses it. Casey could film himself on a Huawei flip phone and make an amazing video, so that doesn't count. People are, I'm taking up so much room with this thing fully extended, that's no problem. I'm the idiot that bought a 50 millimeter equivalent lens to vlog with, because I wanted the blurry background. See those people, they're blurry. So my brother got a bunch of footage outside handheld vlog style and we're going to go back and forth. I'm going to compare the Panasonic to other cameras and he's going to do whatever the hell he does. He's a loser. So to make a long story short, I landed on the Panasonic G85 because it has every feature I would ever need in a camera. The only holding back point was its tiny, tiny little micro p sensor. That's the only thing. I was like, damn it. The first fault with the Panasonic G85, and it's my fault, it's my fault. It's not a switchable NTS FC, what? To Pell, you know what I mean. The, the one in, I should have looked that up. I bought the NTFC one, and if I have those initials wrong, just shut up, shut your mouth. I bought that version living in Canada, and then I moved to Thailand where they use PAL. So every time I'm out in a situation where there's fluorescent lights, I get the flicker. I get the flicker. And I can probably counter it with a better shutter speed that matches it somehow, but I effed up. I'm on the wrong country. And other cameras like GH5, you can switch back and forth. So that's a piece of shit move, penis on. So let me run through a list of features as to why I think this, the Panasonic G85, is still in 2018 the best vlogging camera on planet flat Earth. So the first is the in-body image stabilization. You're watching it at work right now, and it's just so stable. I'm using a 25 millimeter lens, which is equivalent to 50. So it's quite the zoom, and this thing is fully extended on a long ass tripod. It's far, it's far away. It's like three feet away from me right now fully extended and it's doable, it's watchable, it's goodable. Now I just threw on electronic image stabilization on top of the in-body image stabilization and it's even better. It's even kind of, I'm walking too, like this is all right. It crops in a little bit, but it doesn't degrade the image quality much. It's not even a problem at all. So I feel confident using this and that, that brings me to the next feature was its 1080p quality. I'm filming in 1080p right now, and it's good, it's good. The second negative about the Panasonic cameras is the audio levels for the mic jack. They don't go low enough. This goes to minus 12 dB, and I got a lav mic plugged into it, and right now in a quiet room, you're okay. I'm not peaking or anything. If I speak too loud, it can peak. But if you're outside, I've peaked not even talking yet. It's already peaking at the lowest volume. I'm like, I can't even talk. 
you can't use the Rode VideoMic Pro plugged in and turned up to plus 20 dB because this camera won't go low enough. It needs to go down to minus 15 or even minus 20. I don't know why they don't do it. It doesn't take extra power, it takes less. Just like let us lower it. You're too powerful. So those are my only two real gripes with the camera. Other than that, it's the perfect camera other than its tiny sensor. They say size doesn't matter, but I've learned the hard way that it matters. If you have a beast of a computer and you're happy running 4K files through it, all the power to you. But I don't like it. It's too much. It's too much happening. Too many gigabytes. So I needed good quality 1080p and Panasonic leading the pack. The Sony a6500, amazing camera. The 1080p sucks. It sucks. The Sony a7 II, terrible 1080p. It's getting better. The Sony a7S line has good 1080p, but most of them, Canon, it's all soft. Canon 1080p is so soft. If they just gave us good 1080p, that's fine. Everybody's crying about no 4K. Peter Gregg's singing songs, no 4K for you and no 4K for me. Just give me 1080p that looks good. Do I need to remind you there's affiliate links everywhere? Just look anywhere, open up any page, there's affiliate links and you can help support the channel if you find now so necessary to do that. I would appreciate it. So the G85 was released in 2016 and still today, there's not been a camera that beats it for video shooting vlogging, anything, and we're going to go through its top competitors and I'll tell you why this is still better, and you can disagree or not, I will slap you in the mouth. So the Canon M50 was just released, it looks on paper like there it is, there's the perfect vlogging camera, it has everything, but I will say this, worst 1080p quality, Canon for some reason, they messed that up. It will have better autofocus in 1080p, but it's softer. The image is softer and the stabilization is much worse and those are two huge factors for vlogging. There's also a heavy crop in 4K and then you lose the autofocus. So your sensor ends up being smaller than a micro four thirds sensor if you're shooting in 4K. So there's really no advantage other than it's lighter, better autofocus in 1080p. But the lenses suck too. There's your next problem, Canon mirrorless, you're not even close. So the in-body image stabilization means you can use a fast prime lens and still be stabilized. So that's what we're using right now, the 25 millimeter F0.95 Mitocon lens. Love this lens. I usually can't even shoot at F0.95 because just like my left eyelash, a third of my eyelash will be in focus and the rest is out. It's a light camera. It's one of the lightest cameras. It's I believe it's 650-ish grams with a lens. So it's like 505 grams, just a body and a battery. So if you're vlogging, you want a light camera. That Sony a7 III that just came out is heavy. It's much heavier than this, especially if you want to get a wide angle lens, which I'm not using now, but if I want a wide angle lens, it's even lighter. Whereas their wide angle is like 600 grams or something. So it's super light and whenever I think of upgrading to the GH5, I'm like, yeah, it'll look a little better. The stabilization is even better, but it's heavier. The Fuji X-H1, don't even look at me, Fuji. Don't even look at me, you will never touch my body again. They threw everything they had at this one video wise and it's still, I look at it and I'm like, I would never use that for video. The image stabilization is too shaky, so that's their first iteration of it and it's not good. So I wouldn't use that. No flip out screen, that just pisses me off. Look at those guys, see that guy? And you can tickle people. You can't do that with no flip out screen. And it's heavy, and it's in between. It's the APS-C, it's not quite full frame, and it has recording limits of like 10 minutes. What are you gonna film, a squirrel? Rescuing a rabbit? That takes like at least 15 minutes. You have no experience in wildlife, Fuji. <laughs> Fuji should have went full frame instead of medium format. What the hell were you guys thinking? What the hell were you doing that night? How much did you drink 
and what did you mix it with? That was just the biggest mistake. Nobody gives a shit about mi micro medium format. That's it. What? The only real negative I can think about about this camera, and I knew it right away, was the autofocus. It's terrible. I tested it out and I was like, I would never use that in a video. But I never use it anyway. This is a fully manual focus lens. You don't need autofocus for vlogging. I want the 7.5 Lawa F2 lens. I will get that probably. It's another manual focus lens. It's amazing. It also has no slow motion. That can be annoying. I wish I had it. You got the 1080p 60 frames and you can slow that down good enough, but I would have loved a 1080p 120 frames per second mode. So I cry, I cry about that. But in general, you're getting the best quality camera and it's cheap. The a7 III just announced. If you know what you're doing, superior to this piece of shit. But if you don't, it's got no flip out screen, it's heavier, and the stabilization is not as good. So for vlogging, most vloggers are morons. We don't know what the hell we, I can barely feed myself. I know this, put the food in your mouth and chew it. That's all I know. Give one jackass this camera and another jackass the Sony a7 III, and this one's gonna give you the better footage. It's gonna be more stable, it's gonna look better in high light. If you're filming in the dark, your dungeon, you got people trapped in your dungeon, and you need to film it, maybe go for the a7 III. It's not a full frame camera, so it's not gonna be the best in low light, but the sun has gone down. We're pretty much twilight up in this bitch. And what are we at, 800 ISO? It's a pretty clean image. You can go higher. If I go to somewhere darker, I'll go up to 1600 for you. But nothing's clipping here. How you doing? So here's 1600 ISO. It's so light now. It doesn't look like this in real life. It's kind of dark out. It's crazy. Okay, we're at f2.4 now. 3200 ISO. Just so you can see the quality. This, it doesn't, I never film at this ISO, but I'm usually never out at night. Get a light. Get a light, you lose it. And this is f4 at 6400 ISO. This is the max. So, I don't know, is it usable? You tell me. I don't really give a shit. And here's F0.95. This is why I got the lens. I was like, this can compete with full frame. If I just have this F0.95, that's like a 1.9 on a full frame. I was like, okay, now I can get my blurry background and I can pretend like I have a bigger p sensor. What? So it feels better like this. It's just like, it's so hard to get the focus right. But that's the beauty about manual lenses. I know the one lines up with the thing, I'm in focus for the most part, at least at 1.4. I feel like there's a mosquito circulating around me. You'll warn me, right? The A6500, yeah, you'll get better looking 4K, but so much worse looking 1080p. I don't know how they messed that one up. The no flip out screen as well obviously stabs me in the heart but you could get away with it. If you're auto exposing, auto ISO, the autofocus is good, you got a wide enough angle lens, it's doable. The GH5, superior in every way, but it is heavier. So it's weird, it has better stabilization, but it's heavier, which will make you more shaky. So which will actually win out in a vlog circumstance? I'm not sure, but it is much better, but it's heavier in like twice, if not thrice the price. So better, but not unless you're a millionaire, a strong, very strong millionaire. The Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, who the fuck named that? It does have slightly better stabilization. It will look smoother and I love that so much. So almost, but the 1080p quality is so bad. I don't know how they messed that up. Same with Sony. And it's way more expensive. It's like more than, same as the GH5. Then you got all the tiny point and shoots. The one inch sensor cameras like the Canon G7X and Sony RX100 Mark V. And then the new G1X Mark II. None of them have mic inputs. So you cross it off. The first one inch sensor camera like that with a mic jack 
wins. Wins life. Why aren't they doing it? Is it the extra weight? Like 20 milligrams more? A fly could land on your camera while you're vlogging. Same weight. What's your problem? Get your shit together. The last reason Panasonic is better to most of these other cameras is because there's no recording limit. That may not come in handy vlogging. Nobody really makes 40 minute vlog clips. But if you got a podcast, like the hit podcast, Canuck and the Brit, we film for two hours, we can do it on this thing. We go till the battery dies, which is like two and a half hours. So I love that. I love being able to make this video. Maybe this goes over 30 minutes and I clip it all together. It's like, it's such a handy feature. I used to film on the Canon G7X and every 20, 29 minutes it would stop and I'd be like, ah shit, I was right in the middle of that sentence. And I'll just redo the whole thing and say it worse. Awesome. And Nikon, <laughs> what? You still make cameras? What are you doing? You don't know what you're doing. I have no idea what you even make anymore. They all suck. They're bulky and heavy. Autofocus is worse than a cat looking at things in the dark. There's not one human being alive on the planet that is making YouTube videos on a Nikon camera that has more than 17 subscribers. That's just a fact. There's one guy and he has 16 subs and he spent all his money on the Nikon and he'll never get it back. You might as well shoot with a Pentax, freaking Pentax. They have less video features than my Samsung S4, designed in 1841. 1080p, 30p, same shit. So it's like, Panasonic is the perfect all-around camera. If they would just go full frame, if they would just go full frame, they would take over the world. The GHF. Five for fuck you, Sony. We're full frame too, bitch. So, gotta give it to Panasonic. Top dog still. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to abandon you at first sight. I will leave you in the forest. I don't care what eats you. I want to leave. I want to leave. But you're the best right now. Cheapest price. Best looking image. Stable as shit. You got it all. You got it all. <laughs> so, I think we're done here. Let me know your thoughts down below. What's the best vlogging camera for you to film blurry people in the background? I like it. And I just have my lav mic tethered right into it. I know it's clipping a bit sometimes. I can see that. I'm sorry. So we're done here. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, we're done here. We're done.